Come on, come on, we haven't got till doomsday, you know. Let's get the last of that aboard. I must say, when you finally decide to leave, Captain, you certainly move things along. Have to, mate. No good sense in delay, I always say. Who are you? Whitfield, sir. George Whitfield. Oh, yes, I didn't notice your collar under that coat. You're the new chaplain they're sending over there, aren't you? Uh, that's right. Although with all these passengers, I'm surprised you'd remember one man. You must be carrying a hundred easily. Well over that, and not easily. Been so few trips between here and the colonies lately that I've been given the pleasure of escorting all these soldiers, travelers, homesteaders, even the new boy what's going to Georgia's a chaplain. I say... I say you'd better stay in your quarters, Chaplain Whitfield. It's going to be a long, crowded, and uncomfortable trip. People act in peculiar ways when they're this close together for such a long time. I'll have enough trouble without worrying about you starting any sort of religious shenanigans. We greet our friends everywhere with Chapter 9 of Apostle of Two Continents, the story of George Whitfield. This is another in the series Stories of Great Christians and comes to you from the Moody Bible Institute in Chicago. exciting, isn't it? What's that? Sailing. Actually, I'd expect you to be ill, but rather I'm exhilarated. The coastline, the water, the sky stretched out above. And the water seeping in below. I beg your pardon. We're leaking down below. Probably all them people on board. The ship wasn't meant to hold half that number. Do you mean to say that we're sinking? We would if I let her go on this way. Well, what do you intend to do about it? I'm putting in up ahead at the port of deal got the necessary fixings to patch the way to get up. I don't know that I'll, it'll do any good, though, with all of these passengers they've made me load. I think I'd be a bit proud if I were you, Captain. Oh? I mean, with General Oglethorpe himself on board. That's a real honor, I'd say. That shows how much you know about it. Your religious blokes are all the same. What are you talking about? If it wasn't for Oglethorpe and his meddling, we wouldn't have all the trouble we got on this ship. Look round. Everywhere you step, there's a soldier going to keep order in Oglethorpe's private little colony. And where there ain't soldier, there's people. Almost a hundred of them. All going to Georgia to start up homes and things. Well, most of them are going over to start up homes. I'm afraid I don't see your problem, Captain. Uh, look round. I've got a ship that's all but sinking under the weight of all these folk. I've got no proper way to preserve dignity or keep order in these small quarters. I've even got a head in the clouds preacher where don't see no problem. Ah, uh, well. Maybe when we put in a deal for repairs, you'll get lost. Maybe lots of you'll get lost. I wouldn't care less if General Oglethorpe, his old troop, and his chaplain all went on to whatever reward you're expecting for troubling the harder working of the race. you want to stay? It's hard to say, really. Our ship is in the harbor being repaired. What's wrong with it? I say, may I come in? It's awfully chilly out here. What's wrong with your ship? The captain said something about leakage underneath. But what has that to do with... But nobody said how long it'd take to fix, eh? No, no one said a word. Now may I please You'll have in... to pay in advance. I'll be glad to pay in advance. Now, please, I'm nearly frozen. That'll be three pounds. Three pounds? There's a refund after I've checked the room when you leave. Now, come on, pay up and I'll let you in. You look cold. Yes? Reverend Whitfield, there's a crowd of townspeople here to see you. Why didn't you tell me you was famous? To see me? 
Where are they? Downstairs in the parlor and some spread out into the hallway. Well, I'd better see what they want. I told them they have the wrong gentleman, that you was just a boy, but they seemed sure it was you they was after. There he is. That's George Whitfield. Oh, God bless you, George oh, Whitfield. My friends. Oh. My friends. I'm flattered almost to the point of vanity that you should come here on such a night. If there's anything I can do, please make it known to me. Would you exhort us, Reverend? Yes. yes. Oh, yes. Uh, we've all heard a lot about how you make people real to God. Yes, we want to hear. Sounds like more of them. I'm coming. Will you, Reverend Whitfield? Oh, we, we hope you will. My friends, oh, yes, my friends, I'm moved beyond the point of telling it by your appearance here. It's, it's a bit unusual to speak to a large group such as yours outside the sanctuary of a church. However, I have suspected for some time that the idea that God dwells in churches may work as a hindrance to the fact that God dwells within. If you wish it, I shall be happy to speak to you. You'd better keep it nice and short, Reverend. I don't think my floors will stand the weight of this crowd for too long. <laughs> Uh, yes, it is. Good evening. Look at you. Mm. You're all in. Here, sit down. Uh, oh, this feels good. Thank you. I suppose you've been all over uh, creation preaching and trying to help folks. I have been a good distance over the countryside as to the amount of help I've been. <laughs> well, that's a bit harder to measure than the miles. Now, you just sit right there. I've got some good hot mm. tea brewing on the stove. I'll be right back. Oh, God, I shall never be able to apologize enough to you for the wretched way I've ruined my health. All that foolishness at Oxford. And how it takes its due on a day like this. Here we are, just what you need to... Oh, the poor boy. Most active one of those of the cloth I've ever seen. Youngest, too. Maybe if I just remove his shoes. Sidlow used to like that. Shh. Uh, uh, what, what was that? Oh, now there, they've uh, gone and done it. I was hoping uh, you'd get a nice cat nap. A uh, nap? Uh, who's done what? Them. Whoever's at the door. Uh. Well, here's your tea. I'll see who it is. If it's someone for you, I'm telling him you ain't in. Uh, that won't be necessary, please. Well? Uh, please tell Reverend Whitfield that his ship is leaving first thing in the morning, if he'd like to be on board. The ship? It's finally ready. Maybe this time I really am leaving for the colonies. <laughs> I say, sailor, what port is this that we're coming into? Now, this is Deal, Reverend Wesley. You'll have to go by land from here to London. Oh, yes. I remember them saying something about that uh, back in Savannah when we started. Oh, I'll wager you're anxious to see your brother Charles again, eh? <laughs> you seem to know enough about me. John Wesley? <laughs> you don't. Uh, there was all sorts of talk about you back in the colonies. Um, that ship over there, the Whit uh, Whitaker... You know as much about her as you do about everything else? Oh, so that's where she is. Sure I knows. We expected to meet her midwife cross. Lots of important people sailing with her to the colonies. Oh? That's right. General Elglethorpe himself is supposed to be on her. Him and an old troop of soldiers. They even got the new chaplain for Georgia on her. Aye, that's a mighty important ship. Chaplain? I hear tell he's more a boy than a preacher. Whitfield's his name. George Whitfield? You know him. 
Aye, oh, mighty, where you're going in such a hurry? <laughs> I hope you don't expect to meet that, Whitfield. That ship looks like it's about ready to up anchor. This letter was just brought on board for you, Whitfield. Thank you very much. Hmm. The handwriting is so familiar. Who could it... John Wesley. Saw your ship as we arrived. I'm on way to London. Have cast lots and in positive it is God's will that you do not go to Georgia. Careless people, few believers... Waste of God's good time. Now, here's a surprise. Here's a good man telling me he has cast a lot and that God would have me return to London. But I'm sure of my call. I couldn't leave those soldiers to whom I'm supposed to be chaplain. I just want to think. Both prospects cannot be God's will. Yet John is as convinced as I am about it. How does one really discern God's will? Can one really discern his will for another? I just thought I'd tell you we're about to weigh anchor. If there's anything else you need, you better make it fast. Captain, you'd rather I didn't come along, isn't that right? Well, I... You've said as much on previous occasions. You think I'll be another cause of worry for you? Well, maybe I was a bit hasty in me judgment. You see, I never carried a chaplain along before. But I've seen some of what you did here in Deal. Some of the crew was uh, converted, you might say. Then you do want me to come along? Well, I don't see how you could do much harm. The crew ain't never had a religious man on board. Maybe you might even do some good. Uh, thank you, Captain. You've helped. Will I have time to send a letter before we leave? Only if you move fast. I will, Captain, I will. And so you see, John, your coming rather confirms than disannuls my call. It is not fit that the colony be left without a shepherd. I am going to Georgia. And so we conclude Chapter 9 of Apostle of Two Continents, the story of George Whitfield. This is another in the series Stories of Great Christians and comes to you from the Moody Bible Institute in Chicago.